Welcome back to the channel. Today we have an old build that came back to visit us. It's a 2015 GMC Terrain, and it has common GMC Terrain problems, like wipers that only work in manual mode. So we're gonna take it apart, figure out exactly what's wrong with it. I'll show you how to fix it, really cheap, and even free in some cases. Uh, we also have a TPMS light, and that's not free. Well, actually this one is, because Scott's Terrain Emporium is gonna hook us up. But we'll check that out. I have an idea what's wrong with it. Uh, also, since I rebuilt it, somebody's been here before and they didn't do the best work. Uh, I'll show you that, but we'll save that for the end because you guys are probably concerned about the wipers and maybe even the TPMS light. So let's get into it. So first we'll verify the complaint. Yeah, our wipers don't work. I can hear the motor running, so I'm thinking the transmission fell apart. We'll find out in a second. And yep, the tire monitor light is on. In order to get to our wiper motor and transmission, we have to pull the cow screen off before we get that off. We have to pull our wiper arms off. There's a couple little covers that cover up the nuts that hold them onto the studs. Pop those covers off and unbolt the nuts from the studs. And shake the wiper arm a little bit and break it loose from the stud. Or use your wiper arm removal tool. We can pull out our little push pins, pull the centers up, and pop them out. This gasket clips onto the closeout panel that covers up the strut tower and the edge of the fender. We'll disconnect our washer line. A couple more push pins going across the cowl. One last one in that cover on the strut tower. We'll fold that forward and our cowl screen's ready to come out of there. Complete with all the leaves. So now that that's out of the way, we can actually get to our wiper transmission. Just a few 10 millimeter bolts that hold it down. We'll unbolt that from the cowl. Then we can lift our wiper transmission out of here. Well, there's your problem, lady. And we can see our rod fell off. So we definitely found our problem here. Now we can unplug the wiper motor. This is easier to do once you have the whole assembly out of the cowl, just more room to work. Put itself in neutral. So this little bushing gets brittle and cracks. Doesn't hold on tight anymore. And you can buy these bushings. I believe Dorman makes them. That gives you an idea how good the replacements are. Uh, so you can replace that bushing. It's much cheaper than replacing the whole transmission, but there's an even cheaper method and that is to take it back to the dealer because these are warranted. Well, not warranted. There's a recall on them because it's a safety issue. GM has to repair it. If you've already had it repaired and you submit your bill, a lot of times they'll reimburse you for it. They should send you a letter. Uh, a lot of people don't get those letters, but if you check with your dealer, they should replace it free of charge. Even on cars that have rebuilt titles, because it is a safety concern and it is a known problem since they all break. But if you need to just get it fixed right away, you can head on down any U pull it yard and grab it. It fits 10 to 17 Equinox and Terrain. Grab one from the junkyard, throw it in pretty quick, and cross your fingers and hope it lasts. It probably won't. So we have our used one from Scott's Terrain Emporium. We're just gonna throw this in there so the customer can be on their way. They weren't interested in taking it back to the dealer. So, I wasn't going to complain. So we plugged the motor back in. Now we can start our bolts. We'll hold our transmission down to the cowl. Once we get them all started, we can tighten them up. Torque them down to manufacturer spec. Click. 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 Check it and make sure it works before we put it all back together. Can't trust that Scott guy. We're good. Make sure they end up in park. Get the wipers back in the right spot. 
So now we can reinstall our cowl screen. I did clean all the leaves out of it for all the clean freaks. So you don't have to lose any sleep tonight. Set it in there. There's one tab on the back that slides underneath the window, or the windshield on the driver's side. And then there's a bunch of clips across the back that snap into the cowl. And we'll snap those clips in there. We'll put the little rubber ends back in. I didn't take them off the fender because they're kind of a pain to get out. So we'll clip them back in. Put our washer hose back in. Put the little rubber end back on the passenger side. And we'll close up the closeout panel over the strut tower. Snap it in, put our push pins in, and we'll clip this gasket on the edge of it. A couple more push pins across the cowl. And yes, I'm just gonna leave those leaves laying on top of the engine and give it back to the owner like that, just so that the clean freaks cannot sleep tonight. Which brings me joy. I already cleaned the cowl screen, so my cleaning quota is filled for the year. We'll put our wiper arms back on. They do go on in any position, so we do have to get them in the right spot. They are marked for driver and passenger, so you don't mix them up. They are different. Look at them about where they go. Tighten them down. Put our little caps on. Hope we got them in the right spot, otherwise I'm going to have to take them all back apart again. Try them out. Washers work, wipers work, and they'll go flying off the windshield. They aren't binding up on each other. Looks like we're good. Oh yeah, and they work on their own. So I did order a wiper transmission off my Amazon store, just so you know exactly what you're getting. So let's swap it over. Right off the bat, I can see that these bushings are in backwards. those back on the other side. This one doesn't even have one. Does now. Okay. pile. Okay experts, run down to the comments and tell me that's not the right hammer. I should have used the wiper hammer. the only place you can go wrong, getting the timing wrong on this thing. So there you go, our wiper assembly, ready to go in the next vehicle. Scott's Terrain Emporium was running low on these, so that's why I decided just to save our motor, which never goes bad, and change the transmission, so I have a good one ready to go. It's not a matter of if I'll need it, it's a matter of when. So now I have it all ready to go, I'll throw this one in, I'll save the next motor and order another transmission, and I'll just keep recycling them. That way I always have one in stock and ready to go. Okay, so there's our service tire monitor light. 74,000 miles on it. And there we go. Looks like we got a dead wheel sensor. 
first thing we need to do is make sure that we really do have a left rear sensor that's bad and nobody rotated the tires. So let's check it and make sure it's not reading. Not looking good. No sensor detected. So the battery in the sensor is probably dead. Luckily we have one here. Let's see if it works. It does. Zero PSI, but it works. So real quick, we'll just program all the tire sensors. We'll program this one into it. Uh, it'll read zero, but if that works, then we'll switch out the sensor on the inside of the tire. And we'll be done. So GM made it really easy for us to relearn the tire sensors on these. Just go to the TPMS display and hit reset. And then you go around to each wheel, starting with the left front, and you go clockwise around the car. Should you get lost, the car lights up the turn signal on whatever corner you're supposed to be actuating the sensor on. And we'll just relearn our temporary. happy except that it's got zero psi on this tire so let's throw this sensor in the tire so we'll pull the valve core out let all the air out of our tire we need to break just one side of it down i'm lazy now that our tire is deflated we can break the bead on the outside of the tire just make sure you're not doing it where the sensor is and we'll break the sensor out Let's throw it up on the tire machine now. Clamp it down. Now we're gonna push down on the tire just so we have enough room to get in there and unbolt the sensor from the valve stem. There's just a T10 Torx on there. We'll just break it loose and pull it out of there. Hopefully not drop the socket, the sensor, or the screw down in the tire. Then we have to break it down or go fishing it's actually easier to break it down because you can never get them out of there. We'll take our time. On the pile. Now we have our new used one. Free of charge. Don't know how long it'll last, but it'll keep the customer happy and turn the light off. Tighten the screw back up. As long as we don't drop any tools down in there, we're good. Click. And take our little block of wood out of there. Getting stuck under the rim. There we go. Now the tire was underneath the sensor and I really didn't want to break the new sensor. Now we can fill it up. Put it back on the car. We'll top off all the other tires so they're all even. Now we play a little Indiana Jones, put a couple extra PSI in the tire, then try to get the valve in there before we lose too much of it. And hopefully when we're done, we won't have to fill it or deflate it. Getting pretty good at that. Click. I'll check and make sure all of our tires are reading the same, and they are. Tires are all happy. Oil change is happy. Gas gauge isn't. So before I show you the high quality repair that was done on this vehicle by the somebodies, I'll show you exactly what it looked like before they started working on it. Now, I got these pictures sent to me, the accident happened where the car lives down in New Orleans, so I don't exactly make house calls. And it wasn't up here uh, anytime soon. So they had it fixed down there. So another car changed lanes into the side of this one and brushed up against it. 
Well, the inside of the doors are collapsed, so technically it does need doors, not skins, not Bondo. That's the proper way to repair it, unless you're that guy that'll do it cheaper, even for insurance, because this was an insurance job. So let's take a look at it. So right off the bat from 10 feet away, we can see the body lines aren't exactly straight. We can also see that the door gap isn't quite right. We get a little closer, it gets a little worse. We put a little extra paint on there, ran the clear. And our driver's door is still in a little bit further on the bottom and out at the top. Looks like some of the Bondo is starting to blister and starting to rust. So that'll be falling out of there pretty soon along with all the paint. Paint's probably what's holding it together at this point. Our body line that kind of comes and goes. And they didn't even take the Denali nameplate off. They just kind of taped around it. And it's not all the glare from the sun. Their blends really are that bad. But hey, at least with this insurance company, you are in good hands. So our TPMS light is off. Our wipers and washers work. The oil's changed. Looks like this thing is ready to get back out on the road and crash into something else. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.